Hey, this is Joe from Personas. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change how your mixer looks in Studio One. This is one of the questions I get a lot. So first of all, in case you didn't know, you get to the mixer or the console by clicking this mix button down here, but a faster way is to just use F3 on your keyboard. By the way, if you're on a Mac, F3 is sometimes assigned to, uh, what is it? Do that thing here, I'll show you. Um, kind of the default mode for a Mac, when you press F3, it does this thing. Not, not super helpful for what we want to do. So you can actually turn that off under the keyboard preferences by hitting this option right here. Now it'll just work like a regular function key. I don't know if it's the same for Windows. I wouldn't be surprised if there's an option like that there, but that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Okay, so now F3 gives us our mixer. There's a lot of ways to customize this mixer. There's a good chance you're looking at your mixer and yours doesn't look like this, and maybe you want it to. I'm gonna show you all the different ways we can do that. The first place to look is down here on the bottom left-hand side of the mixer. You see these little cute little almost hourglass looking shapes. If you hover over them, they'll tell you a little bit about what they do. Small and large, narrow and normal. So let's go small first and see what happens. Whoops. All right, so if I click that again, I'll show you. Small basically just takes our insert section, which is where our plugins go, and our send section, which is where we do things like reverb sends, takes them and kind of hides them. Now we can still get to them. You'll notice that the top half went away, but you'll also notice right here, see these little um, rectangles? They showed up when we went down like this. That's because now we can click on a particular channel and we can actually see any inserts or sends on that channel. So if I double click on a particular channel, I can kind of expand it. Actually, if I just single click, it will expand and show me what's on that channel. Now I, I, I never use this mode if I need to get to the plugins, but I will use it if I'm doing a long recording session. I don't need access to the plugins. I just want to see my faders, but also see the tracks that I'm recording. This is a cool view that allows you to do that and save some space. Now, if we go the other way and we go back to our normal or what I call the normal mode and we go narrow, it looks like this. Now this can also be handy if you're just doing a, a tracking session and you just need a big, let me show you what it looks like when you hit play, you get big old meters up here and then you can see your uh, mute solo buttons and your faders. So you can't really easily get to any plugins, but you can easily see what's going on in the meters. And then if you've got a particular channel you wanna hone in on, you can double click on it and it will widen out to give you the normal view. So if maybe if I'm tracking a bass guitar and I wanna see all the buttons that I need for that, uh, I may have like this one open. And then if I switch over here, so if I double click, it widens it out. And then if I click on a particular channel, it kind of jumps to that one. So it lets me focus on one at a time. I don't use this mode very often. Really, the only time I use this is if I'm looking to, um, maybe it's a recording session where I just hit record and I back away and it's me and the buddies, we're playing music and I just need to see that the meters are happening. This is kind of the view that I would use. This reminds me of some old hardware recorders I've used in the past where you really do just have a bunch of meters going across. So you can quickly check and say, okay, all my drums are coming through, my bass is coming through, nothing's clipping, everything's great, wonderful. Okay, so that's the narrow view. Now what happens if we go narrow and also small? So we squish it horizontally and vertically, you end up with this. So the, I, if you're new to Studio One, I can see how you see this and say, boy, this is confusing, or why do they have so many options? That's one of the tricks or the challenges of making software that is accessible for people when they're new to be able to do the basics of recording, but also customizable to the people who've been doing this for 20 years who want to be able to customize their experience. That's the, that's the line we're always trying to walk, and hopefully we're walking it well, especially with these videos to explain it a little bit more. So this view kind of takes the, the benefits of both of those worlds, but now I can see every, I've got 50 something, goodness gracious, I've got 50 something tracks in this session, but I can see them all um, that's crazy. Yeah, I can see them all in just one window without having to scroll. So this may be a good view. It, it, honestly, it's just a preference thing. If you need to see the, all the faders without scrolling, all the mute and solo button and panners without scrolling, you can. But then we can always come in like before. We can double click on one and it will expand out to give us the inserts in the sentence. Uh, like I said before, these are all handy 
it's good to know that to do this, especially if you open Studio One for the first time and yours looks like this, but you want it to look like mine in my videos, then the way you do that is you expand out width and you make it nice and tall. This is the way I like to work, um, mainly because I find the workflow of clicking on something and then adjusting a plugin to be a little bit of a waste of time. Um, I don't want to have to say, okay, I need to adjust the EQ on my drum bus. If I have to go click on the drum bus to open it up and then double click on the EQ, that's an extra step. And that's an extra step every time I want to do that. So this mode isn't the mode I would use when I'm in that mixing mindset. I would much rather have it like this, where when I want to grab plugins, yes, it's a little bit wider, but yes, I can also see everything and I'm scrolling left to right using my trackpad. I can just two finger scroll left and right. Uh, if you're using a scroll wheel on a mouse, you hold down shift and scroll up and down and you can easy navigate left and right. So this is a fairly big session, 55 tracks and channels, although I don't have all the background vocals visible. Um, and I can easily navigate it like this. Okay. Now there are a few other things that when you open studio one for the first time, you might see, um, it might look something like this when you open it for the first time. You got this external devices, this instruments tab, these scenes tabs. Unless you specifically know that you want to use these, to me they take up space that I don't need. So this shows me all my visible tracks in my session. That's handy in a specific instance, but for the most part I don't want to see that. So we can just click on anything that's blue, we can click on it to make it go away. Now we're just going to see our tracks in the session. Um, also, if you click on this, the bottom button that shows you all of our tracks, you can also show and hide specific things. We can show all of our tracks, all of our instruments, all of our effects channels, all of our buses, and we can show and hide those separately. If you're thinking, how many buses do I have in this session? You could do this. Okay, now there's nothing, and I can show just my buses, or I can show just my effects channels, or I can show just my audio channels. But typically, I have all of these visible. Um, that's just the way I like to roll. And then I can just scroll through and find what I need to find. And that's where color color coding and things like that become important. One other thing that's not exactly applicable to what I'm talking about today, but someone's going to ask, so I want to make sure I show that to you. A couple of things. If you uh, click on this wrench, these wrenches are really powerful. There's a wrench here on the top left-hand side of your mixer. It gives you a few extra options for what components you have on your mixer. So if you don't see the send section, for example, it's probably deselected here, or you may have dragged it down so far that it disappears. Again, that's one of those handy features. So we, we don't make it a certain size that you have to stick to. We let you move it, but that also means it can hide down here. So just come down here, whoops, click right there and drag that up. But as you saw also, you can adjust this as well. Like it's very customizable, which was one of the cool things when I first started using Studio One that I liked. I was coming from a system where everything stayed the exact same size all the time and you had to navigate around it. Now we can say, well, I don't have a lot of sends, so I'm gonna pull that down so I've got room for my effects to show up up here. Also, if, you don't, if your EQs don't look like this, when you use Pro EQ and a few other plugins that come with Studio One, if you single click on the plugin, it will actually show you a visual of that plugin. I use this mainly for the Pro EQ so I can quickly look and say, right, that's the EQ curve that I have on this channel. I don't typically adjust it, although you can move the EQ around, but typically I just use it as a visual of, okay, this is what I've done here, this is what I've done here, this is what I've done here, and then I can double click to open it up and do more. That's a really handy thing. This thing across the top this with this like trim button, this trim knob and these phase buttons or polarity buttons, uh, that is part of the input controls deal. So if I deselect this, that sh shows and hides. And then the audio device controls, that shows up for, for example, I've got a Studio Live mixer that as my interface, and I can actually control the f turning f phantom power on and off on particular channels, control the preamp gain. That's all available as well. I don't typically show that because I don't use that part of the workflow. But as you can see, there's lots of stuff. We can kind of strip it back to make it very, very simple, or we can add in more components as needed. One final thing, if you're noticing that, see how I've got these tracks colored blue, but also the entire channel is blue and yours isn't, there's a way to fix that as well. Come back to this wrench here on the top left-hand side and make sure you have the colorized channel strips button selected. Otherwise, you'll see the color down here at the bottom and here in this little midsection there. 
um, but everything else is going to be gray. If you're wanting it to be fully color coded, which is what I like, this this is too much gray. I honestly use the colors a lot to find where I am in a session because my drums are always blue, my background vocals are always purple, so I can always quickly scroll until I see purple and go to town. Um, this is usable. I could use this, but I'd much rather have it be like this so I can quickly... Purple just takes up my screen and I can say, okay, I'm in the background vocal section. Let's get to work. Um, and lead vocals are yellow, things like that. Find a color system that works for you. You can always change it, but it'll make, when you open up, when you get to where you've got dozens of sessions and you want to open one up and find what you're looking for pretty quickly, if you've got a consistent color scheme across all of your sessions, and I've been doing this for years, you'll find yourself being able to navigate those really quickly and not feeling like you have to catch yourself up every time you open up a new session. So all my sessions look kind of the same in the sense of the colors go, it's almost like my own rainbow color. Instead of Roy G. Biv, I've got blue, red, green, orange, yellow, purple, or whatever. So those are, I'm sure I've missed a few, but I just got a couple of questions from sev several different people about how to make things look a certain way in the mixer in Studio One. Hopefully I've covered that for you. Go have some fun messing around with this, customizing it. Find a workflow that works for you. And remember, you can always change it and try new things later. Thanks so much for watching. Hope this was helpful for you. If you like stuff like this and you're a Studio One user, you need to be subscribed to our channel. It's the best place to learn more about how to get the most out of Studio One. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. See ya.